Hello everyone, my name is Amelia from Digital Bike Computing. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to look at the Synology NAS and specifically how to back up your Synology NAS to an external hard drive, a USB stick, a USB drive, so that you can have an active backup of all of your data and then send it off site. And it's secure in the event that you lose some data or your Synology NAS has a problem. Before we do go into that, please remember as always to subscribe, clicking on that bell to be kept up to date with all of my videos. So here we are, we are logged into our computer, we've opened up a browser and we've connected into our Synology NAS. This particular Synology NAS is a DS920 Plus. Uh, we are running the standard operating system which comes with the Synology products. And uh, it doesn't really matter which Synology you've got as long as you've got the same sort of interface that you are seeing on my screen right here so that we can use the software and be able to read uh, USB hard drive so that we can do all of our backups. Now, of course, the main purpose of a backup is that you don't want to have just your awesome Synology NAS sitting in a comms cabinet, sitting at home, sitting in an office, wherever it may be, uh, with all of your data on there, and then something goes wrong and you lose all of that data, or you accidentally delete something, or it gets stolen, whatever the scenario may be. So what you want to do is you want to be able to have an easy way to be able to back up all of the data off your Synology from here to here, and then be able to take that and have that stored off-site somewhere. Now the Synology NAS does have an awesome app store, which is under Package Center with a whole bunch of apps. Uh, apps can include things like you can um, back it up onto the cloud, onto Amazon's uh, AWS, you can back it up onto Dropbox, you can back it up onto other areas like that. But the other great thing is that you can back it up to a locally connected USB drive, which makes it the easiest way to back up. Then you get that USB drive, you take it off-site, you've got a secure, easy backup. You can schedule it, you can say, do it this day, every single day or every single week, only back up the files that have changed, super easy. And then that way your backups are up to date. You take that drive off site, you give it to your, your friends, you give it to another office, whatever it may be. And then your data is secure in the event that something goes wrong with your Synology NAS. First thing you need to consider is obviously how much data do you need to be able to back up? So you've got your Synology NAS, you've got a whole bunch of disks inside of it. So in my case, I've got four three terabyte hard drives in there in a RAID, and I've got a whole bunch of data on there. I'm not using up the entire um, RAID. Mine is in a RAID 5, but I've got a lot of data on there. So you've got to have uh, capacity on a USB drive or multiple USB drives to be able to back up all of your data. We're going to cover some software today that you can run, uh, which is completely free, downloadable from the package center that makes it very, very easy to back up to multiple or a single USB drive. So let's say you've got four terabytes worth of data on your Synology NAS. You need to back that up. You don't have to have a four terabyte USB. You could have potentially two, two terabyte USB drives uh, laying around or you go and purchase two and then you can just create two separate backup jobs one that will back up to the first one, one that will back up to the second one. You could have a two and a half or a three and a half SATA hard drive or a solid state and then you plug those into a USB case or you can buy an already enclosed USB hard drive or even a USB thumb drive or an even an SD card that's connected via a USB card reader into the uh, Synology NAS. Now my particular Synology NAS has a whole bunch of USB ports. It's got one at the front, it's got a few at the back um, and you can really run it into any of those. As long as it's plugged in, you can then log into your Synology NAS and see that USB hard drive, mount it, and then run some software to be able to back up to it. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna cross over to my Synology and we're going to plug in our external hard drive. So here is my Synology DS920 Plus NAS. Uh, you'll see that I've got four bays. This is a four bay NAS. I've got four hard drives inside. I've got USB ports on the back. I've got a single USB port on the front and that's where we're gonna be plugging in my external hard drive. This is a standard two and a half inch external hard drive which we plug right in and that's it. You can also, of course, use a USB uh, thumb drive or a USB flash drive, uh, a large one preferably. You could have a pool of these, plugging it into that same port as well. So once that is now plugged in, uh, you're ready to go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is obviously get into our Synology NAS, and what we're gonna go do is we're now gonna go and open up some software. Now in the main menu up the very top left-hand corner here, we wanna go and navigate to Control Panel. 
So you'll see that mine is already in advanced mode. If yours is an, in advanced, click on the little button up here that'll say advanced mode and you can switch between advanced or basic. What you wanna go look for is under the system area, you want to look for external devices. So we're gonna select that. Essentially it's now gonna scan your NAS for any external devices. So it's detected that USB disc one. This is the USB hard drive that we just plugged in. A Little bit more information by dropping down. This is a Toshiba. It's USB 3 and it's 200 and what's well, a 250 gig uh, SSD. Uh, so yours will obviously be different. Uh, and this is the format that it's currently formatted at, which is EXT4. Yours could be fat, formatted in FAT32, in FAT, in NTFS, on Mac OS, if, if you're doing it on a Mac, whatever it may be. And here's the name. And what we want to do first and foremost is go and format this drive. You're going to lose all your data, but it's always good to start fresh and format that drive before we even do anything. So click on the little format button up the very top and we're going to select entire disk. Of course, it'll give you a warning. Uh, all data on the selected drive will be erased. That's fine. And then it gives you two options around what sort of format to use. You've got EXT4, which is primarily used around Linux and is what's essentially what we're going to be using around the Synology. I think it's the best one for what the purpose of what we're trying to do. Uh, you can also do it on FAT32. Uh, it can be used on Windows and Macs. So you can actually mount your USB hard drive onto Windows and Mac, get the data off it, see the data, things like that. Um, but you do have limitations around certain characters and the size of the files that you want to be able to copy into the hard drive because of FAT32. EXT4 is what we're going to be using. Uh, there are ways to still be able to read that drive on a Windows or a Mac PC uh, if you so choose to as well, but we're not going to cover that today. So we're going to select EXT4 and say, OK, warning, everything will be erased. We say yes. You see that it's formatting currently right there. Shouldn't take too long. And that is now done. So now your hard drive is ready. Now, if you do have a pool of different hard drives, get them all plugged in one at a time or even plugged into the multiple USB ports. Make sure they're all formatted. Try to keep the format consistent. If you're gonna be using EXT4, keep them all the same as well. Keep note of the hard drive name. This one is called USB Disk 1 partition one. Okay, that is the name of this particular USB drive. Now that's the first step done. We've got the drive connected, it's plugged in, you're ready to go. The next thing we now want to open up the package center. Package center, of course, being like a little app store. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to search for USB in here and we're going to download USB copy. This is the one that I like to use. Now, just to give you a little bit more information, if you type in backup, there's a whole bunch of software available. Some will also do this as well. The great thing is that you don't, you're not stuck with one particular piece of software. There are others that are better for other purposes, but for what we want to do, which is a simple USB copy, I like USB copy. So we're going to select install for this one right here. It will go and download it and install it. Once that's done, we should now have it listed right here and we can open it up. You're presented with the welcome screen. You've got a few different things what we want to do. You can import, import, and then export. So what we want to do is we want to export data from this Synology NAS to an external USB SD storage device, which is exactly what we want to do. So we're going to select data, export, and select next. We're going to give this a name, test backup. Source is where are the files coming from? Where are the files coming from that you want to back up. So we're going to select this. It's now going to navigate to your Synology NAS. You've, uh, I'm assuming, got a directory structure of some sort, and you're now going to select the actual folders uh, that you want to back up. Okay. Now, in your case, if you want to do the whole lot, and you want to do, say, in my case, I've got data, you could select data and select that, and then that will back up the entire amount. But of course, you've got to make sure that you've got enough capacity on your USB first. So if you don't have enough, say, for this one folder, go into one of the folders within it, as long as it's got enough size on the USB drive to be able to back all of that up. So for my purpose, I'm going to select applications and I'm going to select Apple right here. So Apple contains a whole bunch of Apple folders. It contains some DMG files, which are like executable image files of some operating systems. We select that and we go select. So now the source is data applications, Apple destination is now USB share. So that is my USB share. I drop down my executable thing right here and you'll see that USB share one is listed. That is my USB drive. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create a folder. We want to give it something meaningful, uh, a meaningful name. So I'm just going to say uh, my backups so that I know that within that folder, all of my backups live. Okay, select copy mode. This is where you want to be aware of what's going on here. Multi-version, as it says, a folder will be created for each run and named within the task run each time. All source files will be copied to the destination. So what this is going to do is you back up some files today, you then run the job again tomorrow, it'll create a new folder with a new version of those same files. Uh, you will 
require a lot more space that way. You can do mirrored. So each time a copy task runs, all changes made in the source will be copied to the destination, making the destination folder a complete mirror copy of the source. Newly added file source will be copied. Modified source files will be overwritten with over older copies. Files deleted from the source will be deleted from the destination. I've got a folder called Applications Apple. All my files are in there. I back it up to here. It'll look exactly the same. I then go back to my Apple folder. I add more files on my Synology NAS. It'll back those over. I then delete some files on my Synology NAS. It'll go and delete them on the USB drive. So it'll always make sure that they're a mirror image of each of the two. The next one is incremental. So as it says, each time the copy task runs, newly added and modified files in the source folder will be copied to the destination. Essentially an incremental file, it is, it'll only back up the files that have changed since the last backup. So it will scan your Synology NAS, identify which files are new or have changed, and it'll back just those up over to that USB drive. In my case, I just want it to be an exact copy of my Synology NAS. So I really want mirroring. I wanna make sure that they're, they're in sync, that they're exactly the same. You select the option that is most relevant for you, okay? Mirroring is what I'm gonna select and we're gonna say next. Yep, we say yes. Here's a few things, copy data whenever the USB drive is plugged in. So you plug it in and it will do the job automatically. That's actually quite cool. Uh, eject the USB drive once it's finished. So once it's finished, essentially unmounts the drive so you can safely remove it from, your, from, the, um, from the Synology. And you can also enable a schedule to run at a particular time, particular day, um, whenever you schedule it. Now you can go and change all of this stuff uh, later on. Now for us, we're gonna just untick all of these, but you select ones that are you know, relevant for you. And as I said, you can go and change these later on. Select next. So this option just lets you um, say what files should and shouldn't be moved over, what sort of types of files should and shouldn't move over. So for example, you've got a whole bunch of audio files that you don't want to back up because you maybe already have them in the cloud or whatever it may be. You could untick that and it'll back up everything in that folder except for audio files. Uh, we don't care, we wanna back up the whole thing. You can also add customization so as to exclude EXE files, ISO files from your backups because they may be very large or whatever it may be. We're gonna back up the whole lot. Apply, that is now ready to go. So all we now wanna do is we now want to run it. We want to now back up the job for the very first time. Here's a bit of a summary, it's test backup, data export. It's gonna be doing from that, from that source to that destination. Uh, and this is the summary. Task settings, you can see things here, I can change it. Trigger time, these are the settings that you can change right from here. File filter what we saw just before. So we're gonna go back to overview and we're gonna select run. So that may take a little bit of time uh, depending on how much data you've got on your source folder. So just be aware of that, let that do its thing. If it's the first time you're running a backup, it's gonna take you a long time. It could take overnight, for example. So just let that do its thing and we'll check back. Okay, so that job has now completed, it's successful, which is good. Let's just create another one very quickly. And now we want to say run. Now this shouldn't take too long because it is quite small. See that my NAS is beeping there. You could probably hear that in the background. Just letting me know that things are happening because it is running a backup job and that is now successful. Now you do have file station here on your computer. If you don't, you can access it from main menu, file station, open that up. Okay, here's USB share. That's my USB drive. And here I've got my backups, my backup too. So my backups, there is the folder, Apple, and all the contents of all of that, that's all been backed up onto there. My backups has the contents of my Apache folder. So I can, you know, just grab that, I can then drag it back, I can drag it onto my computer, I can restore it, uh, and that is really it. Now the other thing, of course, right from here, very similar, you can now do import from USB, where you get the data back. Source was now the USB, destination will now be your NAS, and you can restore the files as you so choose to. Now the great thing is that now that your USB backup is now complete, you can now take it off site, you can take it, take it to another office, to a friend's house, family, whatever it may be. One month's time, you wanna bring that hard drive back, you wanna do a new backup because you've got some new files, you plug it in. If you've got it set up on your software here to automatically start, it'll automatically start. Or you can go back into here and if you've got mirroring turned on, you select the job, click on run again, it'll do its job, it'll do a full compare of everything that's on your NAS and everything that's on the USB and then back up everything again. And there you have it, super, super easy on how to do the backup of your Synology NAS. Please comment, like, subscribe, 
clicking on the bell to be kept up to date with everything that's going on in my channel, Digital Bike Computing. And as I said, I did, I did say comment, but please do comment. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts, whether you've got a Synology NAS or you, whether you've got something different. Uh, I, I love the Synology NAS products and uh, hopefully you do too. And feel free to reach out and ask me any questions that you may have. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.